Competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! A gauntlet of big brain plays, Unga Bunga decks, top decking like a beast and orcist. But what is meta? What does well locally? How often a deck wins? Or maybe it's skill plus a balanced deck. In this series, we're gonna find out. Can we take a rogue deck to the top? It's a steep slope, but this is Victory Rogue. Yosh, what's going on YouTube? It is Soulburner here bringing you the very first episode of Victory Rogue. Um, it is a brand new series that I'm starting on my channel. I'm sure you guys saw the intro. Essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tr picking up multiple rogue decks and we're going to be trying them in a competitive or a locals kind of environment and we're going to see how well they do, what their good matchups are, where they can improve. Then I'm going to rank the deck out of a score of a possible five and see if it's worth picking up, worth playing, or even um, if it's a rogue or not. It's currently Saturday, August 29th, 2020. So we have locals at Sages today. We're going to be taking our Infernoble Knight 60 card build um, thanks to Pack Official. If you guys have not checked out his channel, this guy is an absolute whiz when it comes to Infernoble Knights and Fire Warrior based decks. Um, he's a really big fan of 60 card builds. He did a 60 card Shad All build, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but we're going to be taking my variant of a build he did. So we're going to be taking this thing to locals today, see how many cards we can rip out of our opponent's hand. And yeah, we're going to take it from there. Hopefully we can uh, do well. That's the idea, is to actually do well, uh, to prove to you guys I'm not a terrible duelist. And to just have fun. That is the big thing is like, you don't have to spend all this crazy money on like the meta decks when a rogue deck will do just fine. And that's what I'm aiming to answer is, where is the line between budget rogue and meta essentially so hopefully you guys enjoy let's play some Yu-Gi-Oh! noble knights an equip based archetype introduced in 2012 in return of the duelist then receiving later support in cosmo blazer lord tachyon galaxy and extreme force the deck made zero impact and found its weight in a very low tier and was considered unplayable then when all seemed lost, a spark lit the new generation of warriors, the Infern Noble Knights, released in Toon Chaos, then shortly after rounding the deck off in Rise of the Duelists. With these refreshing monsters and their ability to equip themselves from the graveyard, granting the user various forms of protection, this paired with the archetype of the Fire Pendulum Warrior Monsters, the Igniters. You can also take advantage of Electromite 2.0 in the form of Isolde, Two Tales of the Noble Knight, and the powerhouse monster Immortal Phoenix Godfried. You have the ability to break boards, outright stop Nibiru, and overlay into VFD if all seems lost. I aim to master this deck and see how far we can really take it. Light the fire that burns in my soul. May I introduce to you Infer Noble Knights. Thank you. 
Diving headfirst in the round, we're going to be going first, uh, starting off with Ogier to Foolish the Ignite Squire to the graveyard, but he's not going to be staying there long where we're going to banish him to Special Summit Astoffel. He's She's going to become a level 3. Next we're going to be playing Drondal, equipping it to my Ogier, and then just sending it off to the graveyard to search a Fire Warrior from the deck. We're going to be adding the Ignite Crusader to our hand. Then we're going to be going into a Link 2 for the one and only Isolde. Isolde's effect is going to get us Ignite Squire to hand, and then we're going to send the four equip spells from our deck to the graveyard, sending two Cursed Bamboo Swords, a Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, and a Drondal to the graveyard to special summon our Olivier. The Cursed Bamboo Sword is going to add a Broken Bamboo Sword to hand. Next up, we are going to be setting our Pendulum Scales Not to Pendulum Summon, but to pop both of them to get a Godfreed Search. We're just not going to waste any time right here. We're going to banish the Cursed Bamboo Sword and Special Summon the Godfreed just so we're Nibiru Proof. That would be our fifth summon, I'm pretty sure. So if he had it, it would come down now because we don't have any equip spells. But we're going to quickly fix that by equipping Godfreed with Broken Bamboo Sword. Now we're protected. And our board is good, so we're going to go into that Link 1 play for Link Ross, getting us two tokens. We're going to then Link 2 for Noodle Fiber. Noodle Fiber's effect is going to get us a Vion Spheres. And it's spherical! We're going to Synchro Summon Spheres and our level 1 token off for a Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron is going to let us draw a card. We're going to use Vion Spheres to pay 500 life points to equip it to the Godfreed. <laughs> and then we're just going to go ahead and tag it out for one of the equip spells that we sent to the graveyard earlier. We're probably going to get the Durandal here for another search later, but it's good to have. Next we're going to sink for three. Special summoning Martial Metal Marcher. Card is absolutely ridiculous. Marcher is going to bring our spheres back. To where we could use the two machines that we have on our board to make a Aurora Dawn. Aurora Dawn's going to give us three tokens after we chain Link 2 and get the spheres equipped to our Godfrey. Filling our board up with level threes. Next up, we're going to pop the Aurora Dawn and one of the tokens to search our deck and special summon Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion. After that, we're going to Synchro for six to special summon Coral Dragon. Then with Coral Dragon and another level 3, we're going to sink into a Charlemagne. I absolutely love Infernoble Knight Charlemagne. The card is ridiculous. He looks so cool. And Coral Dragon's going to let us draw one card. So now we have both my ace monsters on board. Going to equip the smoke grenade that we drew to our Godfrey. Then trigger Charlemagne's effect to pop the smoke grenade to look at our opponent's hand and pull a card. It's going to be hard to tell with the glare, but we're going to be taking the Express Knight from his hand and send it to the graveyard. Then we're going to tag out... Uh, our Vion Spheres for the Smoke Grenade, set one card, and pass it on to our opponent. Triggering the effect during the end phase for Charlemagne to equip an equip spell from the graveyard. Forgot to do this. Luckily, Ryan was cool enough to let me do it to equip Olivier to himself. He's going to then draw for turn, activate Machina Redeployment, which allows him to discard and add two Machina cards to hand. Next up, he's going to Kaiju my Godfrey, leaving me very sad, and we're going to be losing three of our equip spells. Unfortunately, the smoke grenade does not trigger because it wasn't destroyed. It was just sent to the graveyard. And then he's going to summon the Machina Metal Cruncher. He's going to use Metal Cruncher's effect, but we're going to say no and flip the Imperm we sent last turn. He's then going to send the Citadel from his hand to the graveyard to special summon the Machina Fortress. He is then going to go into the battle phase and crash into my Charlemagne. So he's going to attack into it to try to destroy the Charlemagne, but he can't be targeted so he's going to have to destroy the Olivier instead. Then still during the battle phase, he gets to change into a Machina Citadel. Then with Metal Cruncher, he's going to attack into my O-Lion. And on his effect being sent to the graveyard uh, to get the token, he's going to call by the grave the O-Lion. He's going to then attack into the Gamma Seal to get rid of it, and then pop the Citadel 
to get rid of my Charlemagne. Leaving my board empty to start my turn, I will just do a painful decision to send the Squire from deck to graveyard, uh, and then add a Squire to hand. I'm going to then Monster Reborn my Godfreed, bringing him back. The Phoenix will never die. Normal summon Ignite Paladin, and then with Fire Flint Lady in hand, we get special summon her. Then we're going to go into a Link 2 for our second Isolde. Isolde's effect is going to add Connector to hand for the follow-up. We're going to send Living Fossil to the graveyard with her second effect to get Renowned. Renowned is going to add the Living Fossil back to hand, but it's not going to stay in the hand long because we're going to activate it to bring the Olivier back. Uh, Olivier plus Renowned is 5 because Renowned wasn't summoned as a tuner. So we were able to get the Captain Roland on board. Godfrey is going to attack into the Metal Cruncher, but with his effect, he's just going to suck it up and equip it to himself. Then we're going to attack with Isolde and Captain Roland and pass it off to him. His top deck is not going to be good. He's going to concede, and we're going to go into game two. He's letting us go first again, so we're going to start with a normal summon of an Ignite Squire, followed up by a special summon of an Infernoble Knight, Renaud. Renaud is going to special summon himself as a tuner, but it won't matter much because we're going to sink them. We're going to link them off for and Isolde. We're going to attempt to activate Isolde's first effect and that's going to be met with a swift impermanence, but that's okay, we have the follow-up. We're going to banish the Ignite Squire from our graveyard to special summon the Infernoble Knight, Astoffel, from our hand, giving us two warriors on board to make our second Isolde. The second effect is really the more important one here, so it's okay that we lost the first effect because we're going to be sending Divine Sword, Smoke Grenade, Cursed Bamboo, and Durandal to the graveyard. Cursed Bamboo is going to let us add a Broken Bamboo Sword to hand. And that's going to let us special summon the Infernoble Knight, Olivier. With Olivier on board, it's going to be the same stuff. Link 1, Link 2, Spheres, Sync for 2, Draw a card, Spheres effect for Durandal. Pop the Durandal to search a Fire Flint Lady. Then we're going to Synchro for three for Martial Metal Marcher. Marcher's gonna hit the board, bring back the Spheres. Spheres and Noodle is Aurorodon. Aurorodon's gonna get us our tokens. I forgot to activate the Spheres again, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. We're gonna tag the Aurorodon out for O-Lion, make Coral Dragon, and then we're actually going to go into Trishula here um, since we didn't have the follow-up with the Smoke Grenade. So we're gonna randomly roll and hit one of the trains out of his hand. Uh, it looks like an important one and banish the Imperm from the graveyard. Next up, we are going to draw a card off of Coral Dragon, which is a huge draw in the form of one for one, and that's gonna help us get our board to this point. Had too many extenders that were tuners, so I ended up having to leave my board this way. He's gonna activate a Pot of Desires, which we are going to meet with a Droll and Lockbird. So after he adds the two, that's gonna be all the searching he's gonna be able to do it. He's going to Kaiju my Trishula, which is fine. Um, Trish just needed to hit the board and banish some stuff, so it did what it needed to do. Going into the battle phase, he's going to attack into my Fire Flint Lady for some big boy damage, and he's going to pass it back to us after setting two cards. We'll draw for turn. Normal summon our Ignite Paladin. Next, we are going to sink for seven to make the big tech, the Power Tools Dragon. On activation of the Power Tools Dragon, he's going to flip the Skill Drain. No effect for me, we'll just use the Bamboo Sword and equip it to the Power Tools, as well as get the Olivier from the Graveyard and equip it to the Power Tools. Uh, we're going to use the Kaiju he gave us to crash. That was in his hand, so we're going to attack him for 2300. After that, I'll just end my turn. He's going to Desires again, which is honestly going to be fine. Banishing 20 cards from your deck sounds fine by me. He's going to draw two. Unfortunately, he got rid of a lot of his stuff. We're going to summon the Ignite Crusader. At this point, we both kind of forgot that Skill Drain was on board, so I'm going to Special Summon the Renowned. It doesn't really affect the game state too much because I'm honestly going to get in for lethal either way. There weren't any crazy effects that changed the game state too much. I'm fairly confident I would have had it either way. I had a really good board, a lot of follow-ups, and he banished a bunch of his cards anyways. Pretty solid round one, but I'll be taking it 2-0. Jumping into round two, we are going to be facing off against DDD. He's going to be going first this time, opening with a Dark Contract with the Swamp King, fusing into a DDD Flame King Genghis to start off with. Then he's going to be banishing the two monsters he sent for the Fusion Summon into a second Flame King Genghis. Uh, we forgot to record round one, uh, so this is actually get, uh, round two, and he's going to be going first as it's pretty apparent. He's going to then overlay into a DDD High Wave King Caesar 
and end his turn. Uh, pretty strong Exceed monster. I'm going to be going into Neospace Connector, attempt to activate the effect, to which I will be uh, stopped. It's going to negate and destroy my monster. I'm going to have to pass it back to him after setting down one card. Um, he's going to attack me and pass it back. Fortunately for us, he did not remember to activate the Swamp King to fuse again, so we're going to make a second connector. He's going to do the same thing. And we're going to pass it back to him. He's going to Pendulum and swing for game. We're on to game three. So we're going to be going first again, uh, starting off with Osier, then going into a one-for-one, one, getting the Fire Flint Lady. Huge plays. Um, we're going to be going into an Assault here and searching off a Ignite Crusader with the Assault. We're then going to send four equip spells to the graveyard to get our Infernal Knight Olivier, as well as adding a Broken Bamboo Sword to our hand off of the Cursed Bamboo going to the graveyard. After that, we're going to be going into a Link 1 and just proceed to pop off. He's going to just give us the reins and we are just going to absolutely go off. So Link 1 into Link Cross, to which we're going to get tokens, go into Hockey Fibrax, bring the Sphere out. Sphere and a token is going to make a uh, formula. Then we're going to make a Durandal to search. We're going to pop our scales to get a Godfreed search. We're just going to go ahead and special summon the Godfreed by banishing the Bamboo Sword, tagging out the spheres for a Smoke Grenade, then turning our formula Synchron into a Metal Marcher. Metal Marcher is going to bring the spheres back. Then we're going to go into an Aurora Dawn. Aurora Dawn is going to give us the tokens. Tokens are going to tag out for an O line. Then we're going to go into a Coral Dragon, into a Charlemagne. And using Olivier's effect to equip himself to the Godfreed, triggering Charlemagne's effect to pop the smoke grenade and get a hand loop. We are going to once again tag out our spheres for another smoke grenade. After that, we're going to set one card, trigger Charlemagne's effect during the end phase, and equip him with a Durandal. Going to pass back to him. He's going to go and try and do some stuff. But our board is pretty strong, so we're going to go ahead and say no to him and then drop a fat Drill and Lockbird to stop him from adding any more cards to his hand. After checking his board and weighing some options, it looks like he's going to be going into a Lamia. Uh, on the Lamia return, he's going to sink into a Meteor Burst. On Meteor Burst activation to try to bring the um, Ragnarok, we're going to negate and destroy the uh, Meteor Burst Dragon with Godfrey sending the Durandal to the graveyard. Uh, he's not going to be left with too much to do after that. He's going to make another Gilgamesh and banish the Swirl Slime to special summon another Swirl Slime. Then off of Genghis' effect, he's going to bring the Lamia back. And then on, um, on the activation of the Gil uh, Genghis, we're actually going to say no um, and activate the impermanence we had set last turn. He's going to then pop his own Ragnarok to bring his Lamia back anyways. He's going to link two into Gilgamesh and set his scales. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Apocalypse and a Thomas. He's going to then synchro his monsters into a Alexander. Banish two to bring Apocalypse back and get another Genghis. Uh, he's going to attack my O-Lion, attack the token, and end his turn. Uh, during the end phase, we're going to get Durandal, and during our turn, we're going to then equip the Osier with its effect to the graveyard to Charlemagne, and then pop the Thomas he had set on his scale. And then we're going to attack into the Gilgamesh with Godfried, steal his Alexander, swing into his other monster with Charlemagne. During the end phase, we're going to bring that Durandal back. He's going to go in for a Pendulum Summon, um, attempt to activate the Pendulum Summon effect. We're going to say no with Godfried negate and destroy his monster with the thomas gone it doesn't look like he has very much to do so he's going to concede giving us the game two to one so for some reason my footage for round three is all messed up and i had to use the gopro so it's a little wonky but all you need to know for round three is i went against dinosaurs and they are absolutely ridiculous this format um i really couldn't do much every time i played I just was met with some ridiculous card that just stopped me from being able to do anything. Let's just take the L and move on to round four. Round four, we are back at it again against DDD. This is actually game three. The first two were pretty much the same as, as the game before. I'm one up, he's one up. So we're going to go Assault into Crusader. Um, we're actually just going to get drolled here, but it's not going to matter too much. We don't really need to add anything to hand. So we're just going to do the pretty basic combo for this. Get to Charlemagne with the loop and pull the um, Abyss King from his hand and uh, send it to the graveyard. 
I'm going to set a Cosmic Cyclone. He's going to go and fuse into Genghis. Banish to make another fusion. Um, when he activates the effect of the small Genghis, we are actually going to use the effect of Godfried uh, to clear him off the board, just so we have one less thing to, to deal with. So we're going to pop the Bamboo Sword. Um, he's going to make a Gilgamesh and get his scales. He's going to Pendulum Summon for one. And then on uh, the activation of the Abyss King he had to hand, he, we're going to um, banish it with Cosmic Cyclone. He's going to attack into my smaller monsters, uh, leaving me with Charlemagne and Godfrey. We're going to draw into Renaud, uh, Special Summon Renaud, Normal Summon the Crusader. Um, we're going to then go into the battle phase. Godfrey is going to attack into Gilgamesh, uh, dealing 1700 points of damage to him and sucking up his big Genghis. Charlemagne's effect is going to and when a card becomes equipped charlemagne's effect is going to trigger to pop the apocalypse on his field and then we're going to attack him directly for 5100 going into main phase two he's going to realize there's nothing to do and give me the game we took first place so my phone was dying and my games went really really long so i didn't get the chance to charge it or anything so i wasn't able to record the final match we went against dragon link and it was an absolute blowout for the first game he took it i opened spheres i couldn't extend i made gemba by accident so I wasn't able to like go into my, my token play like you guys had seen all day um, and get those. Um, so he took game one and I really wish I would have been able to, t to record the other two games because they were absolutely nuts. I it, They were crazy, but they were absolutely bonkers. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to do it, but we took first place with 60 card Infern Noble Knight. That is absolutely incredible. So episode one of Victory Rogue is an absolute success. Um, I'll do a deck profile when I get back to the house, um, which will be right now. Okay, so here we are with the deck. Uh, like I had said before, it is 60 card and for Noble, Ignite, uh, Fire Warrior combo. Absolutely insane. I can't wait to go through uh, all the stuff and just why I play what I play and the ratios that I play in here with you guys. So let's go ahead and just dive on into the main deck, go into the side and the extra. Obviously right off the top, we are playing three Immortal Phoenix Godfried. This card is a three of, no exceptions. You play this at three um, because he is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, you just banish an equip spell from a graveyard, special summon him, and he just sucks your opponent's monsters up when he declares an attack, uh, has monster negates, and gains an additional five when he sucks up that mo those monsters. Um, it's really, really good uh, for decks that rely on their cards going to the graveyard um, and just being able to just bore load them and equip it to him. And he doesn't have any arrows, so you can literally do it as many times as you're able to attack with him which is just crazy. He's such a blowout card and I love, I love the Gottfried. Um, he's crazy. Uh, moving on to the Isolde targets. We've got three Connector, one Dolphin, two Sublimation Knight, and one Squeaker. Um, so the reason I run these at these ratios is being able to play five, uh, five cards that just are one card Isolde's is really good. Um, you have other plays that you can do. I personally like the Sublimation Knight because if he gets Valored or any kind of hand trapped and you're just stuck with the Sublimation Knight on the board. He's still a Fire Warrior, so your Renauds and your Fire Flint Ladies can still go off and get you into those Assaults anyways. He's a little bit harder to hand trap since the Squeaker goes to the Spell and Trap Guard zone instead of the Field. And then you guys know Connector, he's he's insane. I, I really want to up the Aqua Dolphin to two, but I just don't know where I would find the space. Probably bring it up later where I would, but I, there was a lot of times today where a second Aqua Dolphin would have came in. Absolutely clutch. So those are my one card is old. Just ridiculous, especially in this deck. Uh, moving on to one of my other favorite cards in the deck, and that takes the form of Infernable Knight Oliver. Or Oliver. This card is crazy. He is a level four Fire Warrior tuner, um, so you just get him off of your assault second effect. You send four equips to the graveyard, and you just get this guy out, and you just proceed to pop off. Um, if you get to the point where you have all of your on field, um, it's already too late for your opponent. They, they're the end is in sight for them. Every time I've gotten him on the field, I've had no problems taking the game. But yeah, he's really good. When he's in the graveyard, you can equip him to one of the monsters on your field. It gives that protection from targeting uh, with against card effects. So very good again on the Godfried, just super good, and then you can trigger it off whenever. So if you get your Charlemagne on board, it's just a free activation of Charlemagne. Um, next up, we run three Renaud. Um, I was playing this at one for a while, but it is also a necessity at three. You also play this card at three. Um, you want to see it in your opening hand, you want to be able to search it late, and you want to be able to draw it. So upping the consistency of being able to see it is, ju there's just no question, get three of these. So he has the ability that if you have a Fire Warrior on field, you special summon him as a tuner, and then you can target one of your banished 
fire warriors or equip spells in the graveyard or banish and add it to your hand. So if you just do a one for one, uh, send a equip spell with a Zold, like you don't have access to your all of yours for whatever, you just send the card. Special summon the one, get it back to your hand, and you could pop off. So you get like Living Fossil, you can get Durandal, and just be able to search. Um, card is super good. I really, really like him. My guy on horse is really good. We are playing two Ogier, or Ogier. I like Ogier. I would often side out the second one, so maybe this would be a good slot for the second Aqua Dolphin. It might be more impactful, uh, to be completely honest, but she is a Foolish Burial, which is really nice. It's a potential card you can kind of cut out. But definitely going into games two and three, I didn't see myself needing two of these. She's easily subbed out with Gamma Seal or Ghost Ogre, so, you know, she's, she's good, but she is also able to equip herself from the graveyard and it gives that monster, uh, the monster cannot be destroyed by card effects. Two of those, again, you could play one and probably be all right. They're playing one Astrophil. She's great. She's an extender as well. You just banish Fire Warrior from your graveyard. Uh, she becomes the level and you special summon her and then while she's in the graveyard during the second main phase or later, you can banish her from the graveyard and special summon the banished Fire Warrior to your field. So if you're able to set up some nutty stuff, uh, you can pr actually make her into a nine uh, overlayer if the game has gone on long enough and you're able to get her. Um, so it's pretty cool. I, I like Astrophil. She's definitely a one of because her effects are once per duel. So you're definitely not going to want to lock yourself into doing her multiple times when you could just do her the once. Uh, she has a really good synergy with Painful Choice, uh, which we'll get into later. But yeah, we play one Astrophil. Um, next up, we are playing three Fire Flint Lady. This is another three of. This is a must three of. It just special summons itself. And then you can pitch a card from your field to special summon one from your hand. So if you have like something that was um, Valored or impermed for the turn, you could just get rid of it on your field. Special summon out like a Renaud or a Olivier or something, just pretty much whatever you have extra in your hand. Uh, Firefront Lady is just a really good extender. Three of, no question. Um, moving on to the Ignites, we have one Crusader and then three Paladin. I would like to switch this for three Crusader and one Paladin, but I'm having a really hard time finding more Crusader. So if you guys have them, I'm looking for two more, please PM me or please leave a comment down below um, and we'll work something out because I really, really like to pick up two more Crusader. Having the low scale uh, level three is just so important for making those nine plays because three, six, nine is just really um, prevalent in the deck uh, when synchroing. So we play, those are our low scales and then we play the three Squire, one Templar. Uh, the fours do come up, that's why I'm just outright just playing with one of each. When you painful choice, if you've already seen two of your squires, you're just going to have to end up getting yourself a paladin, uh, which I guess isn't bad. It came up like once today, and I was pretty happy to see it, but we'll go through a play that was that just made me really happy to have the the level four on the field. So uh, that's, these are my, my, my pendulums. Shout out to Triff Gaming, pendulum best deck when it's in Fire Warrior. Next, we just have some extenders. Uh, Super Quantum Red Lair, Red Ranger, what can you say? Uh, Genba's really good. I like him for, like, uh, as a needle fiber target if need be. It came up once today because I had the spheres in hand. I didn't know what else to get. I was able to make him, and he just kind of ended up being a body on board. I'm not 100% sure on if I want to keep him in here because there are already a lot of tuners, and when Renaud summons himself as a tuner, you can't really do much with him other than Megazold. But yeah, Genba, I like him. I'm just kind of on the fence about it. Maybe he could be the other Aqua Dolphin slot. Not entirely sure. Uh, next, we're uh, moving on to the goat of the deck, the absolute spherical baby that he is, Vylon Sphere. Um, this card is broken. It is absolutely broken. Um, I would not be surprised if he got hit on the next list because he just enables so much degenerate plays. The final match that I wasn't able to record, I opened him First game and second game. In a 60 card build, I opened the one of twice and it was very frustrating, but I was able to clutch the win off of him during the second game. So it's not necessarily a dead card. You just need to be able to survive to when you can use it. So uh, Violent Sphere, if you're unfamiliar, you uh, make it off of uh, Needle Fiber. So you just get it from your deck. And then when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can pay 500 life points to equip it to one of the monsters on your field, and then you can switch it out for any other equip spell in your graveyard. So it's really crazy. You can do it twice with Martial Metal Marcher, get it for free off of Needle Fiber. So very good card. I absolutely love Violent Sphere, and it is just as busted as it sounds. Uh, we're playing two Alion. Uh, I was playing it at one, but you kind of need the second one. It The second one came up a lot today, just because you know if, if you have it in your hand, you still want to search it out of the deck. 
uh, just so you don't draw it again. So I like it at two, my personal preference. You can play it at one if you'd like, but I like it just in case I do open that spheres and I'm not able to make uh, Aurora Dawn because my one machine is in my hand. So I, I personally like the O-Lion at two. Um, next up we have the spells. Again, it's a 60 card build, so it's, we're just now getting to the spells. Uh, so we run the one Monster Reborn. This card came in clutch so many times today. I mean, it's Monster Reborn, what can you say? Uh, we're running two Eagle Booster just to protect that is old. Um, she's pretty much the choke point of the deck, so being able to protect her from hand traps and any other kind of uh, interruption is just really, really good. So I'm running Eagle Boosters at two and three Called by the Grave. Combo, you have to play Called by the Grave. Uh, also, you probably noticed that it, this doesn't run any hand traps because hand traps brick. <laughs> Uh, so those are some protection cards from Quick Plays. Then we have our Rotas. So we have three Heritage of the Chalice. This card is insane. I can't I can't believe this at three. Uh, it's an inarchetypable Rota, just like a equip spell search. It's it's crazy. So you could choose either a Noble Knight or a Noble Arms and get it to your hand. So if you have a scale and one of these, so say you have like one squire and this in your hand, you can just use this, get Durandal, and then equip Durandal to something, and then get your other pendulum scale. Uh, it's it's crazy. It's so good. So because Durandal, when we get into him, it's just really good. And then if the um, the card that you searched or the equip spell that you searched is destroy a battle and send to the graveyard, um, you could just add this back to your hand. It doesn't come up very much, but it's uh, like the resources that this grants you is just absolutely crazy. Uh, not only does it get the the monster, but it also gets a noble arms. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, we then have two unexpected die. I didn't really like this at three. Because it would come up like either in the f in opening hand, which I it, ideally ideally is what you want. Whenever I wouldn't get it in the hand, he would just it's just kind of like a brick because your board is going to be already established. You're not going to get any beard. Um, you can pretty much find a hundred ways to get Godfrey on the board before the Nibiru comes down. So uh, you're also going to have knowledge of your opponent's hand the second turn. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of the point of the deck, so. And I expect to die at two, I like it. Um, you can play it at three if you want. I play one Painful Decision. Uh, this card's very, very good in here, um, especially since all of the Pendulum monsters are normal level four or lower, they're four and three. So the this just gets you a Pendulum Search, essentially. So if you have one, and this, it sets up your graveyard, it puts a Pendulum in your hand. This card is really, really good, and I'm thinking about running it at more than one, but it did come up a lot today. I was honestly thinking about taking it out, but every time I used it, it was just gas. I I love this. I love this card. Uh, one for one. Don't need any explaining. Rota. Don't need any explaining. They're they're staples. You run so many grade ones in this deck. It's kind of kind of ridiculous that you can still synchro climb the way you are able to. Uh, we run two Durandal. Um, I was running it at three, but honestly, the third one never came up. While this is equipped to a monster, you can add one level five or lower fire warrior monster from your deck to your hand, and then send this to the graveyard. It's just a Rota that just takes a little bit more steps but if it's if they stop this it doesn't blow itself up if it, if it doesn't search anything and then if it's sent to the graveyard because the card was destroyed by battle you can target one level five or lower uh, fire warrior in your graveyard and special summon it so it just has so much versatility very cool card art and again it's searchable off of chalice so this just gets you your scales so you have painful decision that gets you your scales um to get godfried you have isolde to get you your your pendulum scales your godfried because uh, when we go into Isolde, we'll, we'll cover all that, but this card, two or three, depending on wh um, how often you want to see it. Uh, I personally play it at two, just because of how many other equip spells we're playing. Um, we're playing the Bamboo Package of three, so two Cursed Bamboo Sword, one Broken Bamboo Sword. I was playing uh, this, and then I put an extra deck monster in and ended up needing the eighth uh, equip spell card, so I ended up running this, because if you open this, you still get to search the other one. Um, they can be equipped to literally anything. They don't, they don't hurt you at all. You equip your opponent's monsters before you make the Godfreed. That way you have the equip on board to negate the monster effects. It's just crazy, super good, and it doesn't hurt you at all. Um, you know, even opening the the regular broken bamboo sword, you're still fine because if you send the, the cursed bamboo, you just search the other one. It's it's very good. Um, next we have Dapper Dino in the form of Living Fossil. It's a monster reborn. Super good. You just get your tuners back and just proceed to pop off. Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, uh, you guys probably have seen this card before, and Smoke Grenade of the Thief um, just loops your opponent's hand and just takes away all their resources. Um, him, this with Charlemagne and Vion Sphere is just an absolutely broken combo. You guys, I'm sure, saw it all day today. <laughs> uh, I absolutely love Smoke Grenade. Wouldn't be surprised if it got hit, but this deck would be still fine if it did get hit. I just want to say, I just want to put out that out there that Smoke Grenade is not the win condition. 
Um, you have so many other cards that loop cards from your hand, it just is another one that helps. Especially since you just send it off to the grave, Violent Spirit back, pretty good. Um, so moving on to the traps, and to finish off the deck, we have one, the Phantom Knight Shade Brigadine. This never came up today, um, and I kind of don't really like when it does come up. Uh, due to the fact that when this is in the graveyard, it's a trap, so you can't banish it with your other um, warrior that you sent for Azold um, to get your Phoenix Blade back, and just being able to have that one extra card um, in your hand that you dump off of Azold is just, it's so good. So I'm thinking about taking this out for like a junk forward or something, just something on, on board. I'm just kind of on the fence about it right now due to the fact that uh, junk forward is an earth and it does not help me extend into my plays because cards specifically need fire warriors. So I, I'll, I'll keep it at the one right now. It's a spicy tech. <laughs> if you if you use your imperms before it, it just kind of sits on board. It's a good way to like kind of bait your opponent as well. Um, and we're playing two infinite imperm. If anything, this could probably be another one. Um, to be completely honest, but I only have the two, so I play the two. This card is busted. Um, probably the best card in the game. Infinite Impermanence is so good, just because your opponent can't really respond to it uh, on turn one. So that is the main deck. We're going to go into the extra now. So we're playing two Isold, uh, two Tales of the Noble Knight. Uh, playing two is kind of a necessity. Um, this extra deck is a little more tight than I'd like it to be. Help yourself to play whatever extra deck stuff you want to play. But Isold pretty self-explanatory for those of you guys who have been playing for a while. But if you don't know, whenever she's summoned, you can add a warrior monster from your deck to your hand, but you're not allowed to activate the effects of that monster, normal summon it, or special summon it that turn. So you just get your pendulum scales, set them as scales, and then pop them. It's super easy. Um, and then her second effect, you can send equip spells from your deck to the graveyard, and then special summon one monster who has levels equal to the number of equip spells you sent. So it just fills your graveyard, Special summons you the Olivier and just stops your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, we have one Link Cross, probably going to get hit, but uh, we won't have a ban list anytime soon, so Link Cross is fine. Halky Fibrax, Needle Fiber, Noodle Fiber, whatever you want to call them. Crazy card, you guys know. Uh, Aurora Dawn, last of the Links. After you make him, you don't need to Link anymore, at least for that turn, but having the second Assault for later is, is also very nice. Next, we're, we have our Synchros. We got Formula and Martial March Metal Marcher. Um, these cards are really good, just draws you a card and gets you a card back from the graveyard. So like I said, this with Violent Sphere is just absolutely nuts because you uh, synchro the Violent Sphere and one of your uh, Link Cross tokens into Formula Synchron and then draw a card and then pay the five to bring the Vi Violent Sphere back, equip it to like a Needle Fiber or something, um, switch it off for like a Durandal, then you synchro that into Metal Marcher with the other Link Cross token and then you just get the Violent Sphere back and then equip it to whatever you have at that point. Um, use the Durandal to pop it off and get your scale, whatever. Uh, it's crazy, you just have so many options. I'm still on the fence about this one. I'm I'm between him and Ignoble. Yeah, Ignoble. Um, so Captain Roland, he's pretty good. He's a level five tuner, pretty easy to get out. Not super, super difficult. Uh, but again, he is a tuner, so sometimes you just end up with a board of a lot of tuners and not really much to do with him. Um, but during the end phase that he is Synchro Summoned, you can send one Equip Spell from the deck to the graveyard and then add one Warrior Monster from your deck to your hand. So again, it just enables you getting your Pendulum Scales. Super good. And then during either player's turn, any quick effect if he's in the graveyard, you can equip him to a card on the field, um, enabling Charlemagne to um, use his effect. Destroy one card on the field, uh, which is really nice. Garden Rose Maiden, this, this card is crazy. Uh, you could just banish it from the graveyard and get a, a Dragon Synchro back. Um, so you're gonna get your Coral Dragon. He's a level six tuner that draws a card when he's sent from the field to, field to the graveyard. Uh, super good. These cards are crazy together. I really, really like them. Coral Dragon is super cool. Uh, next we have uh, level seven. Uh, this is my personal spicy tech in the form of Power Tools Dragon. You run a lot of equip spells in this deck and to be able to kind of search three of them and then randomly get one is really nice. I know they equipped to him, uh, but like Durandal, you could just send it off. You can get like the Bamboo Sword and then get the other one. You can do the Smoke Grenade on him. You just have like a lot of options. Um, so if you're not able to get your to your Sold and send them, you can make your Power Tools. It goes spells that you're able to take out. I like it. Um, it's something I'm playing around with. It came up a couple times today, um, but I'm personally playing that. You guys don't have to. You can play the other Power Tool, Dragon, or just... Boral Savage uh, as a level 8. I didn't really see Savage come up a lot, so... I mean, obviously, it's kind of it sounds moronic not to play Savage when you have a space for it, but that's just me. Uh, I just feel like this has a little bit more synergy with the deck, so... Uh, then we have our 9s in the form of Charlemagne. This card is just absolutely crazy. He just has the ability that when something is equipped, he can blow something up. Then during the end phase, you get a, an equip spell or a Fire Warrior monster, and you put it on your board equipped to him. 
uh, and then he gets a plus five when you do that. So he just, every turn, you could just equip the smoke grenade back to him um, after popping it off, and your opponent just has no choice. They, they have to kaiju this, they have to get rid of it, they, you know, they just ha don't have a choice, but they, they have to get rid of this card. They want to see any success. Uh, Charlemagne is crazy. Then we've got one of one of my favorite cards as well, uh, Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. I love this card. Um, I remember when this first came out, and I just was not able to get my hands on it. Um, so now to be able to have one is really, really cool. It just banishes a card from hand, field, or graveyard. The one from the hand is random, and then you just get rid of your, like, opponent's Golden Lord, their Alistair, any of their plays that they can make next turn, you just absolutely get rid of them. Plus, with the way this deck plays, you're already, you've already hand loped your opponent for either one or two, and they probably have, yeah, there's a chance that they have hand trapped you, so there's already uh, targets in the graveyard, so his effect is not dead. You get at least two uh, per um, so I really like Trish. He came up a lot today. And then we have Crocosaur. He actually didn't come up a lot. I kind of sided him out during the Dragoon match that I wasn't able to record. Um, but he's definitely a necessity in here just because he draws you cards. And he helps you get to your final card, which is probably going to be controversial. And you guys can play something else if you want. But I'm playing the Phantom Fortress Enter Bathalon, Bathalnir or whatever. I just, yeah, Phantom Fortress. You could play VFD in form of this, but I really, really like this card because it just you detach one and banish a card from your opponent's hand. Again, this, this deck is all about hand looping, so having access, like, because you can shut off monster effects for the turn, but being able to pull cards from your opponent's hand, I think is a little bit more impactful. You can always side the VFD if your opponent is just going really aggro with like Dogmatica or something, but I really like this. It was never dead. I, it always came up. I had an extremely clean play with him where I had uh, Charlemagne and Godfried on board, and I had already looped my opponent for three cards, um, and then I overlaid into this, detached the Godfried from this to pull a card from my opponent's hand, and then I Monster Reborn the Godfried. It was it was absolutely crazy. Probably my, my favorite play that I made today. So that is the extra deck, and then we're gonna go quickly into the side. Um, this is just gonna vary depending on what your locals is, but I feel like this is a very, very solid uh, side deck. So this is currently what I'm playing, Gamma Seal, Super Poly, pretty much this stuff. This is for the, the Dragoon match. You want to get rid of Dragoon, uh, either by Kaijuing him or Super Polying him away. For Starving Venom, uh, Droll and Lock is just really, really good this format. There's a lot of cards that draw and add cards to hand. It, I, it came up a lot today. Uh, Ghost Circus Snow Bratbit is really good just in case you run into the Numeron stuff. Uh, just a very good card to have. It doesn't negate, but it does get rid of their monster. So if they do, if you are playing the Mirror, you can get rid of their Assault. Uh, you can get rid of any of the cards that we're going to add. So. If they equip something, you just pop it uh, very nice. And then two Cosmic Cyclone. Um, this deck doesn't have a lot of back row hate because you're going to be getting rid of your opponent's back row before they get to play it. Uh, and then one Red Reboot. Don't know when it's going to come up, but that is an option. Um, so the or the side deck is subject to change to, just depending on your guys' like, um, personal play and everything. But that is going to be the deck profile. Won me first place today. Super, super excited. And we've made it to the end of the video where we rank the deck. All right, so how do we do? In terms of consistency, I'd say yeah. We're pretty consistent. I'm going to give that a 4. Most of our opening hands lead to an Assault, and usually we can play through a bit of interruption before it becomes a problem. Having access to Godfrey through Pendulum Scales and just being able to get the Pendulum Scales through like 5 or 6 different cards is absolutely crazy. Next we're going to talk about power. Now the power this deck puts out is different than power that than another deck would put out per se. In this, you're really going to want to be controlling the field with the Godfrey and the Charlemagne but mostly you're going to be wanting to pull cards from your opponent's hand in a control sense more so than a power sense. So for power, I'm also going to give this a 4, just because of how strong your end board usually is, ending with a Godfrey, a Trish, or a Charlemagne. And they all have the potential to be protected by the cards in the graveyard being Olivier and Ogier to equip to protect them from card effects. Next up, we're going to talk about comeback ability. Uh, I think this deck is absolutely insane when it comes to comeback. I played multiple games where I just did not have a field, and I just top deck into a full board. So for comeback, I'm going to give this a 4 as well. Now for the investment is where it gets a little dicey. The Godfreeds sit around 20 to 25. The Renauds sit at 20 to 30, depending on where you can get them from. Most of the price is going to come from the Renaud and the Godfreed. So for Investment, I'm going to say this is a 5, just due to how many cards you have to get with a bit of a higher price tag, especially when you take into consideration you play the Impermanence. You can also put Droplet and Triple Tax in here. So for Investment, I'm going to say a 5. 
And with that, I'm going to give this deck a solid 85%. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Such a great deck. I had so much fun playing it, and I had even more fun recording it and sharing it with you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this first episode, but that is going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're this far in the video, it means the world to me. I can't wait to make the second episode. I'll see you in the next one, and I hope you have a fiery day.